Hi there, welcome. This is Ann Myrie. I'm coming to you from my home studio in Colorado. What you're looking at is the center of my Nordic Log Cabin quilt, which I drew, stitched, and then painted with Sukuniko inks and Fabrico markers. So I'd like to show you some blending techniques to help you get started painting with inks. Okay, so before we get started on the painting demo, I wanted to show you a before and after washing situation with different um, inks that I used. Okay, so this is just, this was white PFD, and PFD is a prepared for dyeing cotton that you can get through Dharma Trading online. Um, a lot of quilt shops will carry it now. Uh, if you can't or don't have um, PFD fabric, you can just use unbleached um, muslin or, or Kona cotton. Just make sure you wash it first because otherwise it's got some sizing and some other chemicals in it that won't take the paint really well. So if you don't have PFD, just wash your fabric. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in half. This is not what we're covering today, the ink tense pencils, but they're similar in product in that they're ink. So I just wanted to sort of show you um, what, what these look like. These are color pencils from Derwent, which are actually ink when you put water on them. So this top one was with absolutely nothing added. That is um, just the ink and water. This one is ink tense with aloe. And, you know, it's this aloe, this particular aloe had lidocaine in it. I don't really think it matters. It's just a medium that helps the ink spread a little farther. And then this is ink tense with the textile medium. Um, I was at a class recently with a national teacher who uses quite a bit of ink tense penciling, and she has a product that she is selling. Um, it's a textile medium, but I asked her about using aloe, and she said the aloe doesn't make the ink permanent. Well, I. I decided I wanted to try that and I found that the aloe actually makes it just as permanent as the textile medium. You can see there, there's no running at all. The only thing about the textile medium that I like is that it spreads a little bit smoother than the aloe. So, um, you know, if you can get textile medium, fine, but this aloe is 99 cents at Walgreens and so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that unless I'm out and about and I find some. I'm not going to go online and hunt. For something I really don't need. This is the um, the sample of the Sukuniko with absolutely nothing but water. This is the sample of Sukuniko with aloe vera and this aloe doesn't have lidocaine. This is just something I got last time I was at Disney World. They have an after sun cooling gel so I just use that one. It's so convenient because it's in a travel pack or travel size. And then this is the um, Sukuniko ink with a textile medium. And as you can see the textile medium and the aloe, and really in this case, without anything, it actually held up really well. It didn't bleed, and it didn't fade. And so this has been washed um, with a delicate, in the delicate cycle, cold water, with the lingerie soap that you can get at Nordstrom's, the lavender stuff, so it smells really good. And uh, then I dried it just on regular Drying. And I took it out of the uh, the um, dryer and ironed it, and I'm really happy with the results. I I can see using either medium, uh, ink tense and Sukuniko and Fabrico with textile medium or aloe. Okay, so we will get started on um, actually doing some painting. Yay! Okay, so I'll see you at the demo table. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the. Um, the quilted motif that we did from the previous video. It's on PFD fabric, so I'm good to go to paint on it. Um, I have on my palette aloe, white, yellow, and some sparkle, because who doesn't want sparkle? And then in my little tray, which you could use a deviled egg dish if you don't have one of these, or these are pretty cheap at Michael's, um, I've got six colors, a couple of greens, purples, a pink, and a brown. So the ink that comes out of the bottles and out of the markers is really dark. Uh, it's an intense color. So I like to lighten it with white, yellow, aloe, or a, a sparkle. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is how to add white to a color to make it lighter. Now remember when we were doing the white, 
we're actually changing the hue. If we were to just add the aloe, we are not changing the hue, we're changing the saturation. So adding aloe to the color makes the same color but lighter, and adding white actually changes the color. It's called tinting the color, and that makes a brand new color. Obviously, like we'll just start with red because I think everybody knows that red with a little bit of white makes pink. Normally I would start with white and add the dark color as I need it to get the color I want, but I don't really have a color in mind, so I'm just gonna start mixing something up till I get a color I like. That's pretty good. Then I'm gonna add just a little bit of aloe, and what that does is that just helps this color spread a little easier on the fabric. Okay, so you can see I'm just mixing it right here with my Fantastics, which is the uh, product that comes with the ink. It's a it's like a felt tip marker that you can just dip in any color and, and go. And I never wash these, so I'm a huge fan of this technique because there's no cleanup. And the great thing about the fabric, it actually wants to grab the color, so it's not, it's, it's a little different than working on paper, where paper you feel it, you have to work a little harder to scrub it in. And you don't have paint brushes that can, you can get out of control if the bristles are too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all of these the same color. And then I will show you how to highlight and shade it. Now when it comes time to mixing more color, add your white first. Leave a little bit on the outskirts so you can kind of see what color you're trying to match. Don't go nuts and try to get exactly the same. It's actually more interesting if the colors don't match exactly. Just maybe a little bit more red than a bit too much. Put that on the side. Mix. And that's real close. Good enough for me. We're going to shade and highlight these. So even if it seeds coming up, maybe just a little bit lighter. Uh, by the way, these paints, I shouldn't call them paints, they're ink. These inks will get a little bit lighter as they dry. So they go on just darker than you think they might, which is good because then we have more room to shade and play with it. All right, good enough. Now to me, the center of them with this, these little spokes coming out, these want to be darker and these want to be lighter. That is not necessarily how you have to do it. That's just what my mind sees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen, dip it in the color, and just on the side here. Okay, so you can obviously, that's, that's, a, that's darker than this, so when I, when I go to paint, it's gonna give a really nice blend. I'm not even gonna add aloe to it. There's plenty of aloe on the fabric and on my brush. And I really don't wanna lighten the color so much. So I'm just gonna go in and just add some depth. And you could certainly wait to the end to do all this. I get really impatient and I wanna see what it's gonna look like. So I just, I just go ahead and start shading right away. Not only that, the ink is a, um, a still a little wet, so the blend is a little better, I think. And don't just go straight across the top. You want it to be interesting. You want it to be higher in some areas. And you see I'm just tapping it in. I'm, I have the lightest pressure right here. Just like, just like a feather. Okay, so then you can take your, go back to the light color and just sort of tap where the two meet. Especially if you have places where it's, you know, the, the blend is just straight across. It looks a little unnatural. I always like to go for that natural look if I can. 
And then if you want to, you can highlight the top of the flower by just taking some white and adding just the tiniest bit of pink. And just maybe give a little highlight to one side of the petal. Maybe both. Maybe our light source is coming directly from the top. And I think behind that, I'm going to go ahead and paint yellow just to make that flower pop. You could do it in a dark color too, it'd be pretty. And then the yellow just doesn't need, the yellow's really runny for whatever reason. Um, so I don't usually add a lot of aloe to that because, I, well, one, it's already such a light color. I don't want to change uh, the saturation of it. I really want that yellow to be bold. If I did, though, if I wanted that yellow to be lighter, of course I could add the aloe to it, and that would that would definitely lighten it up. You could even add white. You guys, once you figure out that you can stitch and then paint, you're never going to want a piece again. It's so much fun. And then... Um, I always like to add a little bit more depth. That's, that's just the way I like to, to paint and to see things. So I'm going to take a Fabrico marker, which is the same material as these, um, as far as the, what the ink, it's just coming into a, it's, it's coming in a solid form rather than in a liquid form. The liquid, you have a little bit more control. You can play with the blending, but the markers are great because you can just get your little details in there. And these flowers are all coming down to a point, so it's going to be kind of darker in there. So you see, I'm just adding just some little lines just to give that flower some depth. And now I painted the outside with the yellow, but if I take same color, lemon yellow, this marker, and just go in between them, I can even get more depth in there. And one shade, one just tiny shade darker with apricot. Just run that in between the flowers. And then maybe these little spokes want to be silver. And I'm doing this with my yellow brush, so it's going to kind of have a platinum. Platinum yellow appearance. Love it. Now to me, um, of course, because I can't leave anything alone, I'm going to take that dark again. Not add the white, but maybe a little bit of aloe. Just so I, I don't want it too dark. But I want these flowers to kind of look like they're curling in. So I'm just going to take at the top and just brush in some of the true color, the original pigment. And then that defines the edge of the flower again, makes it even stand out more against that yellow. Can you kind of see that? The next thing I want to show you is um, to paint inside of a shape with a lighter color and then outline it between where you've painted and the stitching line with something a little darker and then blending the two. Okay, I've been playing with mixing up some colors here. I've got some white, Tropical Lagoon, and then put some aloe in it. This is lighter than these greens that I want to use with it. So this is the color that I'm going to paint on first. It's a little bit easier to paint the light on first and then blend the dark, the darker colors into the light rather than vice versa. So we're going to go ahead and start on this next petal. Just paint around the center teardrop shape with this lagoon. Now again, this is blue lagoon mixed with white and aloe. We're not going to take it all the way to the edge because we're going to paint something different with that. In fact, I'm going to show you that now so that I can just whip through the rest of these. Okay, then I'm going to take, I've got two different greens that look really similar here, so I'm going to try to remember which one I'm using the one that looks a little more olive. When you 
do this technique and you're blending two colors within one shape, try to stay with colors that are analogous, meaning they're close together on the color wheel. You could get mud if I was trying to do, you know, green into purple or, or um, you know, or brown or something like that. You, you want to stay with colors that make sense, that f would flow into each other really nicely. And green and blue do that beautifully. I added no white to this green, just the aloe. And then to actually get a nice blend, you can kind of just tap the one color into the next, the darker into the blue. So you can kind of see you got that nice swirl. And then go back to the blue. Since it's got white in it, it actually will cover over some of that green and you can really blend it up into it. So this is best doing each petal individually because you want to kind of work with it while it's still moist. And by the time you get all the way back around, if you were to paint all the blues all the way back around, um, you would have dry blue by the time you got to the green. It wouldn't be a big deal. You could still do it because then you're going to go back and paint on it anyway. It's just, you know, make it easy as you can. But it is difficult to get into those little crevices without going over into this white part. So that's the other great thing that these markers are for because I can take this olive green, which will be similar enough, and I can just sort of tap that so that covers if that really bugs you. It doesn't really bug me, but like I said, I love the pen and ink look. And that's actually darker, kind of adds some more interest. So on every line, you can just use your marker and swirl that in. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of these and we'll go on to the background. I am going to do some lilac, really light um, thistle color, maybe a peony color, and then highlight these with some silver, just like we did in here, some silver and purple. So let's see, I think this is a, I don't know which color, purple, yeah, that's a good one. So let's see how dark that is coming right out of the bottle. But if we pop some white in there, and I probably have a 75% white, 25% purple, I, don't, I never really focus on the numbers, I just kind of go by visually what I want. And I think I want something even lighter, so I'm going to even add more white. The petals, the green and blue petals are pretty dark so I want them to pop. If I go with the dark purple, they're not gonna stick out, and that's why I'm lightening this color so much. Adding my aloe so that the color spreads well across the fabric, and just start filling in the background. And I'm going to stop at this line, even though it's not stitched, it's a sharpie line. Because I might want to do something else with these triangles. So I'll get as close as I can. Really light touches here, guys, just like a feather. And I'm just using quick quick little brush strokes, but do what's comfortable. Long strokes are fine too, it doesn't matter. As far as how much aloe I'm putting in, you know, just a little, just a swipe. Um, you'll start to feel how dry that these markers can get on the fabric, and once the paint ink flow stops being real easy, then just pick up some more aloe and put it in your color. And you may need to put more color in it as well. You're trying to keep the same saturation or similar. You can see that I am barely dabbing that into the color. A little goes a long way, which is nice. These ink bottles will last for a long time. Unless, of course, you've eliminated piecing completely and are going to go ahead and paint your entire quilt which is beautiful. Some people do that. And as promised, I'm dipping my little pen into the platinum color. But I 
want purple platinum. A little lighter. Those little details when you shade and darken an area really bring the the composition to life. So don't be afraid to just throw in, just be consistent. You know, like here I'm just throwing in some darker right where the right where the um, teardrop shape starts. And if you do the same thing on all of them, it looks really great. No one will question it. It looks good. The next thing I want to show you is just to put in a, a nice light color and then color over it with the same color marker to give detail. side here. Just separate that line. And then blend it up into the piece. Kind of gives it some good painterly depth. Okay, I've gone all the way around with that thistle color and then sort of highlighted where this black sharpie my line is with um, the cherry and then I've got this Fabrico marker that's called Garnet which is really similar to, to sort of a mix between both of the colors. I want to use the um, at the end that's going to give me a finer line and I think I'm going to just draw and then maybe come down to Outline it. Okay, that's really pretty. It gives a nice detail. So line up to the center. We outline it, and then it'll end up being two. And I'll probably end up just for fun. Just cause oh, I don't need that part too. All right, so what I want to do is I want to have this big yellow um, triangle and this red or pink, but I want it to look translucent, almost like you can see through the yellow here. So my idea, let's see if it works, is I'm going to paint this whole thing yellow only because it's such a light color. If I was doing two deeper colors, I would only paint this outside. Okay. So you'd think that if I paint this part with cherry and the skinny part, the colors would blend, but that, that's not necessarily gonna happen because the yellow is so much lighter. So what I think I'm gonna do is paint just the top, just grab some cherry. Give me a little bit more aloe, my Walt Disney aloe back up here this time okay and then just paint the top for now and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and make a blend with yellow and cherry using probably 75% yellow, maybe 80% yellow, just a guess. But you want to have a little practice fabric of um, PFD or the same fabric that you're using to practice your different colors and blends on by the side. Because it's amazing what you think you're going to get is not necessarily what you get on the fabric. And we don't want any disappointments. So I've got, got my yellow. Starting with that lighter color, I'm going to add the tiniest bit. So it almost looks like a tequila sunrise if you're into that kind of thing. And paint it. So we got a little bit of translucency. That looks kind of cool.
So what I'm mixing up here is the Tropical Lagoon with aloe. Probably close to half and half, maybe a little more aloe than Lagoon. And I'm going to start painting from this line coming down. So start all the way at the line with this nice dark color. And then gradually I want this to get lighter. So what I'm going to do, let's leave that alone because we're going to need that. I'm going to take some blue, take some white, some more aloe, a little more blue, and then start Brushing some of the color into the middle and letting that blend in. And then third color going here with lots of white, just a little bit of that blue, and then some aloe. So I've got three values here. I've got the dark, medium, light. Okay. And then kind of start blending that in. Now this is a bit of a, because that we've got that white in there, it does stand alone. It sits on top of that blue rather than give a blend like a like a normal ink would so just very lightly start pulling that white up into that blue and you'll get sort of a sky effect Some more light. see how that white wants to just sit right on top of that blue and just lightly Go between the colors. If you feel like you want some more of that middle color, just pick that up. And then start blending it in. And then the dark color. Just a little bit at a time. <clears throat> See, so it goes a long way. So once you're happy with that blend, then you can actually go in with the original pigment. No aloe, anything, just the ink. And just barely darken that line so you really get that beautiful edge. These brushes I just keep using over and over again. I just keep kind of a, like three or four for blues and three or four for greens. And then just try to keep true to, to those. The, the white, the yellow, those need to stay white and yellow. But I don't really focus too much on what green I used with what marker. I just, if this looks like it has some blue on it, that's gonna be fine because the ink is gonna dry on the felt tips and next time you go to use them, you may get a little bit of transfer, which actually thinks makes it look more interesting, but it's, you, it, it's not enough to go and wash these out every time. I'll replace them once my point, the tip is no longer pointy. No, you know, it's, it's starting to fray and get yucky. I, frankly, I've never even replaced these yet. I just keep using them over and over and over again. But somehow my white ones keep getting tainted with the other colors, so I'm, I am due to buy probably five or six more just for white. And then the other thing is that the metallic, those sparkles tend to stay in the felt tip. So maybe have separate um, Fantastics for the um, metallics. 
And then the other thing is it comes in, they come in two different points. There's the pointy, which I'm just using, and then there's the these rounded dauber ends. These are great for blending and, um, you know, color washes, maybe some backgrounds, but I can't get enough detail with these, so I rarely use them. Um, maybe I'll come up with some other way to use them, but I the pointy ones are my go-to sticks because I can get in lots of details with those points. Okay, so that's sort of a blended with one color using aloe and white, and I'm going to go ahead and um, finish the rest. Okay, so I went all the way around with the blue gradated color, and I do want to keep the negative space in here, but I am dying to know what it would look like to just put some platinum in there. So I think what I'm going to do is take a paintbrush, even though I promised we didn't need a paintbrush. I would use a Fantastics, but all of mine are pretty dirty. They've got colors on them, and I just want this to have the sparkle. I don't really want color in there. So I'm just taking a teeny tiny little flathead skinny paintbrush. This isn't too scary. And I'm just going to paint. that little white area with some what is this called? What did I tell you? Champagne Mist. So we've got Tequila Sunrise and Champagne. This could be a little cocktail coaster. You could just cut them out and bind them around. You could use a, a satin stitch and they would be the cutest coasters prettiest coasters. Very tropical. You could do them in different colors for different drinks. That would be kind of fun. I guess I'll be having cocktails tonight now. You can use water with these inks if you are working on a piece that hasn't already been quilted. Um, I went to go work on a quilt one time and I had water because I wanted a real blendy look and it bled all the way to the back. So if you're working on a piece that's already been quilted, which is almost always what I do, since that's my, the, my whole concept is to quilt first and then add the, the fun stuff, um, then you want to make sure that you are not putting too much water on this. If you have a, a concept that you want to do a blendy ink effect, that's great, but do that before you make your quilt sandwich and quilt on it. The nice thing about these inks is that they do meld into the fabric, so it's not like paint sitting on there. So if you stitch on top of it, the holes don't show as bad or at all um, as they would with, with textile paints. That said, I do like to use a 60 needle and a thin thread, um, 60 weight or higher, when I'm stitching on top of something that I've already painted or inked. Well, I hope you give this a try. I know some of you probably already have these Sukuniko inks and Fabrico markers sitting right there on your shelf. Um, if you're anything like me and you see it demonstrated in a store and um, or online or wherever at a show and you buy them and then you get home and you're just like, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. Um, at some point you just have to break them open and just play with them. Enjoy the painting, enjoy your quilting, enjoy your you time. And um, until next time, stitch on and quilt as inspired.